So Apple has caught everyone off guard by just announcing a pencil. Yes, that's literally all we got. We're wanting new iPads, but no, Apple's gonna give us a pencil instead. And while this technically releases five years after Apple Pencil 2, I wouldn't really call this a successor because just when you thought the iPad range wasn't confusing enough, Apple was like, hey, let's make things worse and chuck in a third pencil for no reason. Yay! Anyways, let's try and break this down. So as I'd mentioned in previous videos, there has been talk of some sort of USB-C Apple Pencil in the works. We first saw mention of this in iOS 17.1 codes, and well, what I thought this meant was a USB-C version of Apple Pencil 1. You see, right now, one of the worst things about the iPad 10 is the fact you had to rely on a stupid dongle to charge the actual pencil. So of course, with the EU forcing Apple to switch everything to USB-C, I thought this was the perfect time for Apple to switch the pencil to Type-C, and this kinda happened. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this it would be appreciated. Because we did get a USB-C Apple Pencil, but it's not exactly what I envisioned. As I said, I was expecting Apple to update Apple Pencil 1 with USB-C on the end, and so ideally you could just plug the pencil directly into the iPad to charge it, that would be clutch. The new pencil, however, has a sliding cap that reveals a USB-C port, not a connector, and so of course, as a result, to pair this to an iPad or charge it using an iPad, you still need a Type-C cable. But I guess at the end of the day, I'll gladly take this over the stupid dongle situation we had last year, and you can, of course, just use a USB-C charger to charge the pencil, so that's great, but that's where the positives end. Because you see, instead of this replacing the Apple Pencil 1 in the range, it sits alongside it, and also has less features. Yeah, I'm confused. So compared to the first generation pencil that launched all the way back in 2015, this new pencil lacks pressure sensitivity. So this means if you press harder on the screen, the thickness of the pencil is gonna stay exactly the same, and I know some might not care about this, especially if you're only writing up notes. But guys, it's crazy to me this pencil is lacking something that was standards eight years ago, especially when it likely doesn't cost Apple a lot to include this, and so why leave it out? And the weirdness continues because this new pencil has a very similar design to the existing second gen, and so you can now use this on any USB-C iPads, and not just the iPad 10. Now does that mean this can magnetically charge with those other iPads? No, it can't, but it can actually still magnetically attach to any iPads, and it just sits there. What? What is going on? Apparently it goes into a sleep state when attached, but it's still weird to me they gave this the ability to magnetically attach to any iPads, but you don't get wireless pairing. Now this does have tilt sensitivity and Apple Pencil Hover, if you care about those features, but another big omission is the double tap feature Apple Pencil 2 has. This, for example, allows you to switch between the pencil and eraser tool effortlessly. It's super clutch. And so once again, when this new pencil has the same design and the same flat side that was implemented for this feature on the second gen pencil, it's really weird. This is not getting it. I guess I'm glad Apple kept the matte sides. That's much better than the glossy finish Apple Pencil 1 has. But at the end of the day, why has Apple complicated the Apple Pencil range this much? We really should only have one pencil. Apple kind of screwed everything up by not giving the iPad 10 second generation pencil support last year. And as a result, we now have this mess. And it blows my mind how Apple's execs think regular consumers are going to understand all of this. In fact, I feel bad for Apple Store employees who will have to try and convey this to consumers because even for us as techies, this lineup is terrible. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm down for a cheaper option in the range, but for one, this USB-C pencil should have every feature the first generation pencil has, and the old first gen should be dropped from the range. I guess that will eventually happen when the iPad 11 is discontinued, but either way, it's really weird. These pencils coexist in the range, and the new model isn't the clear superior choice. And because there's so many compromises, and the second gen pencil's five years old at this point, you can actually find those often for around the same price 
as this new USB-C pencil. In fact, a few weeks ago I saw the second generation pencil drop to £80 here in the UK, which is about the same as retail price for the USB-C pencil. Now I'm sure this also applies to the US and other countries, and yes, I know via the education store you can get this new pencil for less, but if you have anything other than the iPad 10, try and find the second gen pencil for less via third parties because it is the much superior choice. And honestly, you could also consider knockoff Apple pencils. I've seen plenty of videos showing off these £20 fake pencils that give you a very similar experience across the boards. For the non-base iPads, they pair the same way with the same fancy animations. You don't get pressure sensitivity, but I can look past that for the low price. And they also have a USB-C port, so this can be paired with the iPad 10, and so you should strongly consider this instead. However, if you have an iPad 10 and you really want a first party option, then this is the one to guess, I guess. But by far the weirdest thing about this pencil is the fact it was released without a new iPad. Yes, somehow Makatakara was kinda right. They were wrong about the magnetic tips, but they were right about a new pencil releasing and no new iPads. Also, Mark Gurman said the same, and so the fact we didn't see a base iPad alongside this low-cost pencil does suggest to me that Quo unfortunately might be right. Remember, he did tell us a few weeks ago that this could be the first year since 2010 where we don't get any new iPads. Yes, that's 13 consecutive years of releases, but Quo believes Apple's gonna break that cycle this year, and let's just say, if Apple really had plans to release a new base iPad, they would have dropped it today with this pencil. It's very unlike Apple to just release a new accessory by itself. The only other product that comes to mind is the MagSafe power bank, and that also was a very weird product. So yes, the fact they did not take this opportunity to announce a new refreshed iPad 11 with this pencil does suggest to me there's no new base iPads. I hope I'm wrong though. Also apparently Apple recently released an eSIM version of the iPad 10 in China, which again does suggest there won't be a new base iPad. And so that's kind of sad guys. I wasn't really excited about the potential upgrades, but more with the potential of a price cut, which I think was very likely. And I feel like the reception of the pencil would have been a lot better if Apple gave us a discounted base iPad alongside it, since this pencil's really only made for that demographic. Now, yes, you may be wondering, why didn't Apple just give us this pencil back when the iPad 10 was released? I have no idea, but it's out now for the iPad 10 users. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.